Hello, my friends, and welcome back to... Hey, what are you... No? Get out of here, you hairy beast. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. I want to talk today about SonarCube. SonarCube is a fantastic tool that allows us to create quality gates and shows us how our code behaves at the moment. We have the possibility to add that with Flutter and Dart, and I will show you today how you can do it and which advantages it brings to us. And now without further ado, let's get started. All right, so in nearly every company that I've worked for, I started sooner or later to integrate SonarCube. SonarCube is completely for free for community edition, but there is also a professional edition that allows you to get support from the SonarCube team. Why I want to show you that today is because SonarCube helps me a lot and I used it nearly all the time in every company that I worked for. Why is that the case? Well, it allows us to define specific coding standards in our code. And if you get some errors there, you can work on them. Additionally, it allows you to get quality gates. And what that is, is it shows you if you have created new bugs and if you have too many of them, you are not allowed more or less to work further. So it's just a flag that gets from green to red. All right, but where does SonarCube help us actually? The idea of SonarCube is to allow us to analyze our code for specific like bugs and code deaths. Also, it takes a look into code coverage. So, but what all of these means and why is it important for us? It allows us to create so-called quality gates. A quality gate is nothing else than a switch that turns off from green to red whenever we get a problem in our code or if we create or introduce too many of these problems. SonarCube allows us to identify different topics. For example, maintainability, uh, reliability, test coverage and different. So all of these things are getting analyzed by SonarCube and allows us to get more information. Sadly, if you take a look here, you will see that the SonarCube community is open currently for Dart and Flutter. So it is not actually supported yet, but I would make this video if it would not be possible anyway. Because of this fantastic GitHub issue or GitHub project, we have the possibility to add SonarCube to Dart and Flutter. And I want to show you today how you can install it locally, because who wants not having a SonarCube server on their machine? After that, we want to take a look into how we apply this plugin and how we can analyze our code. But before we start now talking about why or how we can implement everything and use it, let's have first a look into why we actually need SonarCube. In a usual project, we are in a team, right? For let's say six developers and we want together define some quality standards for our project, meaning we have a certain test coverage, we have a reliability, we want to remove as many bugs as possible. And only if these code debts are already taken care of, we want to proceed with next features. Because as you probably know, the longer a bug lives in your code and the harder it gets to maintain, the more expensive it will be also to maintain it and fix it again. Additionally, you want to maybe discuss with business and business people usually don't really care about code or technical stuff. They care about graphics and numbers. And if you have the right figures, the right key figures and the right graphics for it, you have the possibility to talk with them in one eye line and you can tell them, hey, our bug has code deads, it has bugs, it introduced to less code coverage for testing and we have to fix that first before we can advance with your new features. All right, but now that we know the why and what we want to do now, let's get started into code and let's integrate SonarCube for our projects. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you have to do is go to sonacube.org. You will find the link down in the description below and press the download button. Check the community version and download for free. While this is downloading, which can take a second, we check the pre-requirements that we need for it. The pre-requirements are actually pretty simple. We need Java JDK 11, and that is very important, version 11. You will find Java 11 down in the video description below, and you just have to install it for your environment. So if you have that, there are some hardware requirements. In our case, this fits all of them. You will find this page here um, directly down in the video description. We will work now on a local server so that means we have it locally installed in a debug mode and that means that we don't have to for example post sql database or a microsoft sql server for it we just let it run locally 
Okay, so now you can see that this Sonar Cube is downloaded and we extract this file. So it is a compressed zip file at the moment. I just go inside, copy the whole thing and move to a folder that I like. For me, it's tools and I copy it over here. So it will take a second. <clears throat> and while this is copying, we want to rename them. And the next thing we want to do is just start it up. All right. So I copied it over here and I renamed it to Sonacube to find it easier. And I jumped inside and navigate now into that folder. So I opened here a CMD. This is the command line tool from Windows, but you can also use PowerShell, Terminal and uh, whatever you floats your boat. At least you can start something up inside of it. So we navigate here inside of the bin folder. Oh, sorry. And if we check it, we will find three different folders, Linux, macOS and Windows. Of course, we want to go to Windows because we have currently a Windows machine. If you are working on Mac OS or on Linux, you just choose the appropriate folder. So and here inside we will find a fantastic start sonar but which we will execute now and if everything works well we should now see no issue at all and this should just make a lot of text and noise and after that we are able to navigate to localhost 9000 so let us wait a second and let's see what happens that looks already quite good. So let's try to navigate to localhost 9000. And you can see we are in the maintenance mode and Sonarcube is starting up. Fantastic. Now we just have to wait a second until the server is configured and we are able to start the application. All right, so after some seconds, we are now able to work on Sonarcube. For that, we have the login and password, and this is defined as admin, and you guessed it already, admin again. Now, this is your initial password. Now you change it to whatever you like. I will take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the same thing for the confirmation because it's just a local environment, and we are ready. So, here inside, you don't see anything at the moment. We don't have any projects, but you can see already we have a lot of filters. We have issues, rules, quality profiles, administration, and all of that we can set up in a second. But first of all, we have to create a new project. So let's do that. We can do it via a server. So if you have a server, you can take it directly from GitHub, from GitLab, Bitbucket, and so on and so forth. But we will do it manually. So let's take a project key. So for example, test project, and let's set that one up. Okay, so now we can uh, generate a token. Uh, this token needs a key. So for us, we just take flutter test and generate this token. <coughs> And with this token, we will now take our project information. So I just clicked it away. You can get the token here still. So we are on Windows and here you get now the possibility to download a so-called Sonarcube scanner. And this Sonarcube scanner is very important for us. So we cl click download. And here inside, you will choose the um, tooling that you need. For us, I have a Windows 64-bit version installed and I have that already done, downloaded and installed. And you can find that here. And this Sonarcube scanner needs to be set in the environment variables. So inside of environment variables in the path, you can see that I have installed this Sonarcube scanner here inside. Make sure that it is inside of the bin folder. Unfortunately, Flutter and Dart is currently not supported via Sonarcube itself. So you find this thread where I also added my comment to it that we should have a real support from Sonarcube community. But until it exists, there is a fantastic package from uh, Sonar Flutter from inside app OSS, and you have the possibility to still add it to yours. So how can we do that? We have to install it for our server. So how does it work? We go and get the latest release. This is currently 0.3.1. Uh, and you just hit down here the jar file. This is the one that we need. So we keep that one. And if we take a look into how we do it, um, we can see that the installation on the server is just to go to the Sonarcube home extensions plugins directory and we have to restart the server. So let's see if we manage that. So we have here the jar file. I take that one and hit it over to, um, to our Sonarcube instance, which is in tools, Sonarcube extensions plugins. 
And here we add our new jar. Good. So now we have to restart the server. We will be back as soon as the server is restarted. All right. So the server is restarted and we are back here in our test project. You remember that we selected this analyzer stuff and we installed now the scanner. We also have now the plugin in place. Now we have the possibility to take all this line of code. You can just click here on copy. And with this line of code, you would push your changes up here. But there is also another possibility that I want to show you that you have some possibilities to add more settings to it. As you can see in the GitHub project of Sonar Flutter, we have this project configuration. And as you see for that, we have to create a sonar project.properties file in our project. I have here already a project prepared, our power bill app. That is a bit more sophisticated project. So we see a bit more stuff than just the regular hello world example. And now let's create here a file, the sonar project.properties and we add it to our um, Git repository. And we add all these informations into this properties. So now the project key is for our case, I guess that was test project, exactly. And this test project comes here and the project name is test project. We keep the version number and here this part is also interesting. It specifies where our source files lives and where our test files live. So in our case, it is lib and test, perfect. The next thing is sonar source encoding UTF-8. This is just how we encode our stuff and it's just the default one. All right, so that we have now specified all these information in our SONAR project properties, we are able to execute now our SONAR linting, uh, this line of code here. And the only thing that we actually need is the SONAR scanner.bat, which is our execution of the scanning. And we need this login part at the end with our token. So if we push that now, everything should work fine and push all the information up to the server. So let's give that a second and let's see how it works. All right, so after some seconds, we got execution success and we get two URLs. One of them is a dashboard, which we can click on and we get opened everything up and I register myself to the dashboard once more. And here you can see now that our quality gate is passed at the moment. So we get some information about our bugs. You can see we have currently 144 bugs according to SonarCube. If we click on that, we get analyzers like for example, prefer final over const or something like that with the variable declaration if they are not designed. We can go inside, we can directly see where the error appears. You can see I used here var and it says that I should use final for this functions, uh, for this variables and it declares that as a bug. But as you can see, it also gives it a value. For example, in this case, it is a minor problem. Perfect. So this is one thing that it shows us. But also what it shows us is the so-called code dead. And dead are code smells, so small things that you can improve. For example, prefer relative imports for lib and um, prefer double quotes if you want like that. All these things document all public members and so on and so forth. So my Dart analyzes are also taken care of and shown here if we make there somewhere a problem. Another thing that we can see is that we receive our coverage. If you have run your Flutter tests with coverage like I did, you can see we can say Flutter test hyphen hyphen coverage, then you receive a folder called coverage with a so-called LCOF info file. And this file doesn't look very beautiful, but it contains all the information which lines of code has been tested and which one doesn't. And this one gets uploaded into there. And if you click on this, you can see which files are tested. So you can see a lot of them are not tested, but we have also some that are pretty good tested. So. This gives you a whole understanding of your application and where you are at the moment. And then you have the possibility to add such quality gates. At the moment, these quality gates can be set by yourself. So you can create one, give it a name and so on. But I just take this Sonar Way standard one, which allows us to have coverage is less than 80%, duplicated lines of code are less than 3%, maintainability rating should be worse than A, reliability rating should be worse than A, and so on and so forth. And this allows you to also take this 
past part here and I see right now that somewhere needs to be an error. Yeah, you see it up here because you can see that the reliability is BD but should be A. So the quality gate, I think it's because of the demo, um, doesn't work. But it usually works. So and what we can now do with this quality gate, we can take it and implement it, for example, in our readme file to see if we are successfully um, managed to put our quality standards in place. So for that, we go into project description uh, or information up here and get project badges. And this project badges, like you see here, can be added to your code in your readme file, for example, and you have the possibility to add that there. So with that, you are now able to add that to your CI CD. So if this quality gate is bad, then you cannot build anymore, for example. But what you can also do is just add it to your readme file or um, talk with business about these numbers and figures and also talk with your team about it because with that you have every tool in your hand to improve your code quality. Fantastic. All right. So we were able to install SonarCube locally, we implemented the plugin and we analyzed our first code. Now you have the dashboard and the key figures in your hand to talk with business in one level and explain them why you need more time for a specific feature or why you want to need some time for refactoring your code. Fantastic. I would like to know down in the comments below from you guys if you have ever used SonarCube in your projects and how you used it. All right, so now hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, and we will see us next week. Thank you for watching, until the next time, see ya.